This is a video case report of interventional cholangioscopy and management of hepatic cystic echinococcosis complicated by a cystobiliary fistula. Authors include Drs. Kraft, Cassis, Shea, and Nasser, as well as pharmacist Jeff Quadato. A 38-year-old female, originally from Kashmir, India, presented for evaluation of right upper quadrant abdominal pain. Laboratory workup revealed moderate eosinophilia, hyperbilirubinemia, and elevated alkaline phosphatase. CT scan of the abdomen and ultrasonography of the liver revealed a giant multiseptated cyst located within the right lobe of the liver. Serology detected an IgG antibody to a Kinococcus species. On the left, a CT scan with IV contrast demonstrates a giant multiseptated echinococcal cyst measuring 10 by 9 by 9 centimeters. Cyst septations produce a wheel-like pattern. Cyst morphology is most consistent with WHO IWGE classification type CE2 or Garby classification type 3. This is an active stage cyst. On the right, an ultrasound of the liver shows a rosette-like pattern of daughter cysts contained along the inferior margin of the echinococcal cyst. A probable case of active stage hepatic cystic echinococcosis complicated by intrabiliary rupture was diagnosed. WHO IWGE stage-specific approach to treatment was recommended using a combined approach of antiparasitic benzimidazole therapy and surgery. Albendazole was begun, but the patient declined surgery despite numerous indications. After six months of continuous albendazole therapy, abdominal pain persisted and laboratory derangements suggested an ongoing cystobiliary fistula. Repeat CT scan of the econococcal cyst showed enlarged dimensions. Localized dilation of the right antero-inferior biliary tree and degenerative morphological alterations consistent with WHO IWGE classification type CE3A or Garby classification type 2. This is a transitional stage econococcal cyst. The pair technique which is puncture, aspiration, injection of a protoscoliocide, and reaspiration, along with continuous catheter drainage and benzimidazole therapy, was considered as a therapeutic option given the cyst size and its degeneration to a non septate transitional stage. This strategy was not employed because the suspected presence of a cystobiliary fistula precluded use of the protoscoliocide injection due to the risk of chemically induced sclerosing cholangitis and the patient declined percutaneous continuous catheter drainage. To accommodate the patient's desire for a minimally invasive approach towards management of the suspected cystobiliary fistula in the setting of a giant non-septate transitional stage econococcal cyst, a novel therapy was offered using ERCP and cholangioscopy. The duodenoscope was advanced to the second portion of the duodenum. Bile duct cannulation was performed and occlusion cholangiogram showed contrast dye extravasating from the left and right hepatic ducts into the echinococcal cyst. Biliary endoscopic sphincterotomy, followed by sweeps of the extraction balloon catheter, exposed brood capsules and hydatid sand from the common bile duct into the duodenum. The cholangioscope was passed into the common bile duct for direct visualization. Another cholangiogram redemonstrates two cystobiliary fistulas.
the guide wire was passed through the right hepatic duct, cystobiliary fistula, and into the echinococcal cyst. The cholangioscope was advanced along the guide wire and into the right hepatic duct, stopping immediately distal to the cystobiliary fistula. 400 milliliters of hypertonic saline was injected through the cystobiliary fistula to inactivate the germinal layer and to kill protoscolices remaining in the cyst cavity. Biopsy forceps were deployed through the cystobiliary fistula and into the echinococcal cyst to mechanically disrupt the cyst contents. Newly destroyed cyst contents, including hydatid sand, brood capsules, and membrane fragments, were suctioned through the cystobiliary fistula using the cholangioscope. Extraction balloon catheter sweeps cleared residual debris from the common hepatic and bile ducts. A 10 French by 9 centimeter plastic stent was placed into the common bile duct to encourage biliary drainage and accelerate fistula closure. Biliary stent placement ensured prompt drainage of residual hypertonic saline, thereby decreasing the risk of chemically induced sclerosing cholangitis. Three weeks after ERCP and cholangioscopy, Abdominal pain improved and serum eosinophil count, bilirubin, and alkaline phosphatase normalized. Post-procedural abendazole was continued for one month to decrease the risk of secondary cystic echinococcus from protoscolex dissemination. The figure on the right shows the evolution of serum eosinophils and bilirubin relative to medical and procedural management. Three weeks after ERCP and cholangioscopy, CT scan showed a decrease in the size of the echinococcal cyst, now measuring 9 by 11 by 10 centimeters. Using ERCP and cholangioscopy, we successfully diagnosed and treated a giant transitional stage echinococcal cyst with cystobiliary fistulas. ERCP was utilized to confirm the presence of cystobiliary fistulas and to expose brood capsules and hydrated sand from the common bile duct. The cholangioscope was navigated to the distal opening of a cystobiliary fistula, allowing us to inject hypertonic saline into the cyst cavity and to deploy biopsy forceps to disrupt its contents. This unique approach was selected to accommodate the patient's desire for a minimally invasive intervention. Moreover, the pair technique was contraindicated for the presence of cystobiliary fistulas. Placement of a biliary stent following installation of hypertonic saline into the echinococcal cyst ensured prompt drainage of residual hypertonic saline, thereby minimizing the risk of chemically induced sclerosing cholangitis. Clinical laboratory and radiographic improvement occurred after the intervention, indicating a decrease in mass effect and closure of the cystobiliary fistula. We would like to give a special thanks to Dr. John Cardinal and pharmacist Christine Hanks for contributing to the management of this patient. The following references were utilized in the production of this video case report.